The SUS calculator package provides everything you're going to do with the system usability scale. And your starting place is this home page. And the first place that you're going to want to start is probably with scoring the responses from users. And to do that, we start in the scoring and benchmark section and click on the link SUS scoring and reliability. From here, we can paste the actual values that the users uh, provide to the 10 items, one to five. This tab will automatically convert the odd items, reverse them so they're all in the correct order, uh, and rescale them from zero to four, and then multiply the sum of each value times 2.5, which is the typical SUS procedure. It provides a SUS score per each user, as we can see here. It gets then averaged together to provide a, a SUS score for the study. So this particular website has an average test score of a 77.7 .7 with a standard deviation of 13.5 and as we can see that comes from 37 um, values that are not blank. Um, we also have a measure of internal reliability. That's what this Kronbach Alpha means. We want a value here above 0 0.70 and when the Kronbach Alpha is above 0 0.70 well, this flag here will tell us that we have good internal reliability. Below 0.7 it'll say poor. There are also a few other checks that are um, incorporated into the spreadsheet. Um, for one, it's common to have missing values, uh, especially in an unmoderated testing setup where you can't uh, verify that users filled in all values, and especially if there's no JavaScript check. Uh, as soon as there's a missing value, a substitute SUS score is used. This is what would um, this estimates what the uh, value would be and provides a, uses a different multiple instead of 2.5 for the number of missing values. So we can see it's 66.7. If, if there's another blank value, for example, yet a different multiple gets used and a different estimate of the SUS score gets provided and then averaged in with the other uh, 36 values. If there's three or more blank values, the calculator defaults and does not include that into the mean SUS score. Um, the logic being that if there's um, that many blank that perhaps there's something wrong with this particular survey or um, the user wasn't paying attention and, and only sort of haphazardly answered it. They put those values back. Um, another check that's involved in this tab is a, a check for inconsistent responses. Again, in unmoderated testing setups, there's, uh, especially with professional uh, test takers, there are chances uh, it's, it's common to see uh, users in about 5 to 10 percent of the time rush through surveys and not even paying attention. So um, the SUS actually has the ability to detect that by just looking at users who are agreeing to negative items and agreeing to the positive items. So if I add a few more agreements here, just one more actually in this case, um, we could see an orange box that highlights this particular user. This tells us that this user is likely um, pr providing inconsistent results and you might want to double check those the, either the codings or to see if this user was um, just not paying attention because their responses are suggesting that they both love it and hate it at the same time, which doesn't make sense. Another thing you're going to want to do once you get your average SUS score is interpret that score. W what is a good SUS score? Uh, to find that out, you convert your raw SUS score to a percentile by clicking on that uh, tab and you enter the value, the raw SUS score value in here. For example, for uh, 77.8, which we saw in the previous example, uh, it tells us that it's pretty good. It's better than 82.1% of all the other hundreds of products tested. And uh, there's also different ways of interpreting that uh, from some prior research. Uh, I'd use this grade here, the Sorrow and Lewis grade of a B plus. And because this uh, happened to come from a set of website data, we can also specify this more uh, granular to the type of application tested. So here's websites. And we'll see that only increases it a little bit because of uh, where this score fell relative to all products and websites. And you can interpret this value down here as well. So we see that uh, a raw SUS score of 77.8 has a higher SUS score than 82.35% uh, of websites. All right, another really cool, super handy thing that this calculator will do for you is track uh, changes over time in a dashboard for the SUS scores. So in the confidence interval section, click on the dashboard for changes over time link. And it takes you to this tab. And what you can see here are our values of SUS scores over time. Let's say you're testing at the beginning of a 
uh, a, a design phase and then as you add new features and at different critical points in testing you continue to administer the sus score so you just uh, the sus questionnaire you just paste in the raw the average sus score here the standard deviation and the sample size you used and the graphs automatically are going to update uh, generate these confidence intervals for you that's what these yellow bars are this is, this is where we'd expect the uh, total user population average just from the sample to be. So this is what our estimate, our best estimate is. And the way you interpret this graph is where there are no overlapping intervals, where the error bars don't overlap, we can conclude that there is a statistical difference. That is, the movement here is unlikely to be due, uh, due to chance alone. So we could see where we started out with an initial design of 62 or so, it bumped up to an 87. Well, that rather large increase is unlikely to be due to chance, even for just from measuring 12 and 13 users in each group. What I've also got on this graph are uh, is a is a benchmark that's going to update. So right here, I've got the global benchmark of a 68. If, for example, this was consumer software or something with a higher benchmark, let's say of a 75, uh, that's going to automatically update in here. And again, we can use the boundaries of these confidence intervals where we see the lower end above the benchmark. We can conclude that the difference is at least statistically higher than that. So it is in this data point, but it's not here. It's, it's below. And uh, for these values here, it's just above that threshold. If we needed a higher level of confidence, we just increase the confidence level, which in turn increases the width of the confidence intervals. But again, we can see where the points where we're above this threshold of 75. I've got 12 data points in here. Um, it's probably unlikely that you were going to have that that many, but fortunately the graph is going to do this super cool automatic updating for you. And at any point you just update um, the labels. It's going to update on the graph and the chart automatically updates. So we can see here changes over time. Then if we got, say, a new SUS score, it's automatically going to update for you in a uh, Generate that for a dashboard at any time. Once we have our uh, raw SUS data, another thing we're going to want to do is generate a confidence interval around those responses so we can understand the likely range of the total user population average SUS score. So under the confidence interval section, we'll click on confidence interval around raw SUS responses. And I have pasted in here the values from uh, the scoring section. You can get that from the SUS scoring and reliability sheet by just copying these values here. Copy, and then back to this tab. And then just paste the values. Don't paste the formulas. So that gets entered in here. And then um, it automatically, there's our mean of 77.7, .7, the standard deviation of 13.5, and the 37 values. It, looks in here and it generates our confidence interval for us of uh, about a 74 to about an 81 or an 82. Uh, this is a 90 percent confidence interval. I can also generate a 95 percent confidence interval interval if I need to be more precise. A graph as you can see will update over here from these values and then finally uh, there's a way of interpreting that down here in how to report. It's basically saying we can be 97.5 percent confident population mean, in this case that's the SUS score, is above 73.20. I would change that back down to 90, or we can be 95% confident the population mean is above about a 74. Another thing you're going to likely want to do is compare uh, two SUS scores, say from competing products or just from two points in time, earlier version of a product, new version of product, different populations or different persona SUS scores. Uh, you'll likely use uh, this between subjects comparison test pretty frequently. Clicking on that tab, what I've got here is uh, product A's SUS scores from 11 users and then product B's from 12 different users. It automatically calculates the average SUS score and then uh, we see that there's only a two point difference. It generates a p-value of 0.28 which is interpreted here for you how to report. It's telling you there's only a 71.8 percent chance the average SUS scores are different, um, which in most cases is not enough evidence to conclude that one is different. We'd want that in the 90s or certainly high 80s to conclude um, that there was a statistical difference there. And uh, there are automatically uh, graphs updating here that show you both the mean and the 95% confidence intervals, which can be updated as well.
This calculator will also help you estimate the needed sample size for your uh, particular SUS study. It's a common question, well, what sample size do I need for my usability test if I'm going to be using the system usability scale? While this depends on a number of factors, the two most common would be uh, just a one-off test where you're just getting an estimate or a benchmark of the perceived usability. Under the sample size heading, you click on for a margin of error. And you have to put in just the desired level, the margin of error you want. So in this case, I've got five points. So if I get a SUS score of a 68, it would be 68 plus or minus uh, five points would be the 95% confidence interval. If I wanted a margin of error of 10 points, then you could see how my sample size changes there, down to 20. So you'll notice before when I had it at 5, I wanted a desired margin error of 5, the 95% confidence level. I need to plan on testing 71 people, summarized here, to have a margin of error of plus or minus 5 points, have a sample size of 71. Of course, if I want this at 2 points, you could see how, how high the sample size uh, goes up there. I would need to plan on testing 426 users to be 95% confident my actual SUS score would be within plus or minus 2 points, which is very precise and probably uh, more precise than is needed for most studies. The calculations happen here below. Another common scenario is wanting to find the sample size when comparing two sets of users to see, for example, if the SUS score in one product is higher than a SUS score in another product. To compute the sample size, under the sample size heading, click Comparing Two Groups when you have independent uh, sets of users in each group. It's a between subject study. At the very minimum, all you need to uh, enter in this calculator is a reasonable point difference you expect to see in SUS scores. I've got the default SUS standard deviation already calculated, the def uh, typical power of 80% confidence level and the number of tails. So if I would expect a 15 point difference between um, two products, that would be a 60 and a 75, for example, which are pretty large differences. Um, I would need 44 users in each group to have an 80% chance of detecting that difference or for a total sample size of 88. If I wanted to detect a five point difference, um, you could see what that does to the sample size. So there's all sorts of what-if scenarios you could play, a 10-point difference. And so you need to use whatever reasonable difference you would expect to see in order to calculate as a reasonable uh, sample size estimate. Often it's the case that you're, you know the number of users you're going to test ahead of time, and so this second option allows you to enter the total number of users. So for example, let's say you know the most you can test in each group would be 50, and you were only expecting a 10 point difference between groups as a reasonable difference. You, if before you were to actually execute the study, you could see the power of the study is telling you that there's only around a 28% or 29% chance of detecting a difference of 10 points if there was only uh, 50 users in each group. Now this value is going to match the other value over here. We've got uh, 10 points in here, 10 points, if I put 95 as the sample size in each group here, you can see this gets you up to 80. It's rounded up so it goes above 80, so if I change the sample size to 94, there's a still roughly an 80% chance. So um, both these allow you to detect uh, the sample sizes or the power you need given your sample size and conduct several what-if scenarios when planning uh, studies with the SUS questionnaire.